mass culture substitutes religion in postmodern society. What do I mean by that? Religion holds people together, it holds its members together with a common sense of purpose, a common um, set of beliefs, and all of these obvious qualities. And yet, in postmodern society, we have a plurality of different religions all seen under the same under the same light and that light is the light of science of secular culture in which universal human values have emerged and into our consciousness and so the singular ideology the singular religion is invalid and we are held together now by mass culture, popular culture, and yet mass culture lacks any connection to the deep metaphysics that religion provides. It's not connected with a commonly held belief on where we come from, what the meaning of life is, what our purpose here is. We're on our own to pursue those questions, to pursue that element of our lives independently of any established way of doing so. We live in a nomic society, to use a word from Emil Durkheim. This is one of the reasons why I believe that Richard Dawkins and the new atheists that emerged in the early 2000s did more to spread delusion than to demystify it, because orienting your beliefs and your place in the world at, through atheism uh, means that you're sticking with this negation. You have this negate, you're defining your beliefs by a negation of other beliefs, religious beliefs. And in doing so, you're creating a blind spot in which your own personal biases will contribute to whatever ideology you're most, um, um, that whatever ideology is closest to you, your, your own biases are going to contribute to your own religion, your own delusions. And so we have many poor substitutes of religion. We have, in the case of feminism, you have the attempt to substitute religion in a way that superficially seems better in the sense that there's so many antiquated doctrines to traditional religion that do not work with the modern world, and feminism speaks directly to issues that we face today. And yet, it has within it, it smuggles in within it this prejudice in which original sin is substituted by privilege, Yet this privilege is not something that is distributed evenly among all people. Rather, it's um, men who have more privilege, and especially white men who have more privilege than all the others. So where, whereas Christianity assumes everyone to be born equally flawed, has that at least it has that belief inbuilt in it. I'm not saying that Christianity is better than feminism, Rather, that there are certain elements to our traditional religions that survive millennia. And they are, in a sense, more durable than the particular ideologies that arise in uh, historical circumstances um, that are unique, anachronistic, that come and go. Um, so, what I want to... Uh, get at here is the emergence of a new religion, not a religion, a new convention, I'd rather say. Something I call the organic convention. I've mentioned it before. That is to say, if you look at pre-modern art, and if you look at pre-modern civilization, religion holds this central role in which the conventions of society are based around, or built around. The architecture, the art, all work to endorse the tenets of the religion and create a social cohesion um, that 
postmodern society, uh, in most ways, it lacks. And most of the problems that we face in postmodern society, I believe, relate to this. Now, I'm not saying that pre-modern society is better. Absolutely not. So much of the benefits of modernity and post-modernity um, come with these negative symptoms. A, an estrangement from each other, a lack of meaning, sense of meaning, greater addictive pleasures, these are the problems that postmodern people face, that pre-modern people face much bigger, different problems. Um, but this is unique to our time. And so science, secularization, has alienated us from our past, from the metaphysical beliefs that would hold us together. At the same time, it's brought about all these great benefits. Primarily, the ability to coexist with people with different ideologies. And the only way that that is possible is that there has to be an underlying set of principles that are stronger than the principles, the traditional principles that are incorporated within it. I simply mean by that the way that, that the Roman Empire would allow different pe people with different beliefs so long as that they were compliant to the authority of the Roman Empire. Likewise, in Western civilization, especially the United States of America, you have ideas like freedom of speech, the rights of man, universal human values that ultimately... Um, are more important than the different cultures, different customs that are incorporated within Western society and the United States. In other words, you could bring your religion, you could bring your customs, but they have to coexist, they have to be uh, harmonized with everyone else's. And to do that, they have to abide, they have to be alienated. They have to be alienated from traditional culture. That is what the separation of church and state is in the United States of America. That is an alienation of religion from government. 